Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to wait just a minute to um, get started and build a little audience this morning. I'm a couple minutes late. <clears throat> it's funny, I was just writing some notes this morning and um, feeling a little emotional about it. So I'm hoping that uh, I won't be terribly emotional just trying to get through this. Um, thanks for joining me, even if you're not joining me live, but you're watching the recording. Um, I appreciate you taking the time and the effort because I know we're all terribly busy. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I don't know about you, but I've often felt really alone in this work. Um, I know that that might really sound surprising considering I, um, you know, that I essentially am talking to people all day long um, but the reality is, is that most of the time I'm sitting alone at home and working day in and day out. And I really miss being connected when I was part of the San Diego birth network, um, for, well, I was part of it for nearly eight years and I knew everyone in town in the birth community because we came together and we connected, we helped and supported each other which in turn really gave us the emotional nourishment we needed to help the families we served. But beyond that, you know, there was nothing more fulfilling though than to hear a family who took the information that they received from us, whether they hired any of us at all, but in, but in some cases they just took the information that they learned and they made educated decisions about their care. And a lot of times they would reach out or, you know, I remember a family actually taking, I, I think I'd mentioned this, but um, yesterday in yesterday's video, but but um, she printed out the ACOG um, guidelines for, or a, there was a, it was actually a study on the um, reliability of ultrasound. <clears throat> And she actually took it to her doctor when her doctor was encouraging her to um, do an induction for big baby. And she took that information and had a real discussion with her doctor. And her doctor wasn't, you know, he wasn't too thrilled about it initially, but she just said, listen, I, the, I, I trust this information. I respect you and the information that you've given me, but this is the decision that I have made. And ultimately he wound up, you know, supporting her in that decision. And she went on to have uh, almost, you know, I think it was uh, 41 and six days um, uh, pregnant and went into labor and had a beautifully smooth labor. Now, of course, there's no guarantee that it'll still be smooth just because you don't do an induction. I don't want to give that indication, but it definitely increases the chances of that. So um, one of the other things that happened while I was with um, and working within the community was that we had a hospital literally change its entire marketing campaign. And they also started to take a hard look at their cesarean numbers. And for me, that was a huge step in the right direction. I mentioned them yesterday that they actually posted their cesarean numbers up in their doctor's lounge so the doctors could see what the others were doing and compare. And, um, you know, kind of, I, I would even say instilling a little bit of competition, which I think is not a bad thing. So, you know, these things wouldn't have happened without, without the advocates and the women showing up to tell their stories because over and over again, we've seen the impact of our rallies in communities, whether it's hospital administrators showing up and actually participating in events or having an open dialogue that wasn't even there to begin with. You know, guys, the consumer does not have a seat in the at the table in most of these situations. They are not 
being included when hospital policy is being made. They are not part of the discussion in, in any aspect in most cases. And as a consumer organization, we have the opportunity to be that voice. We have the opportunity in our communities, and especially if you have the name of an organization like Improving Birth that has established itself, you know, we are, um, we have had communications with ACOG and A1 and um, ACNM, and, you know, they are, they all know who we are. And having that name behind us can make a huge difference. But the reality is, we can't make this happen without you. We cannot have the impact and the change that we want to see without people, frankly, like me, like you, who really want to advocate. So for people who are hungry to contribute, to change, to impact, to serve, you know, I guess the question is, are you ready to look around your community and know that you made a difference in people's lives? Improving birth is designed specifically to help you grow your impact and by giving you the tools and the support that you need to really make a difference. Look, currently, currently care practices are determined by providers. They're, they're determined by the provider preference, the financial concerns, liability concerns, and deeply embedded yet outdated practice patterns. Improving birth believes that birth can be better and that it matters. It matters for the lifelong mental health and the well being for the entire family. We also believe that women should be the ultimate decision makers in childbirth, and they have the right to be treated with dignity and compassion when they make a decision that might not match what the provider is feeling. We also believe that the maternity care system is decades behind what we know is best for moms and babies. And there's no real motivation in the system to change. And it's really up to us to, to bring in that motivation, to bring, we can't do it just the, you know, there's lots of advocates around the country. You know, I think of Jenny Joseph and um, Hermine Hayes Klein and Deborah Pascali Bernardo. And there's, there's, there's this handful of amazing people and we, we need you to join the team. We need you to be that support system and to really make a difference in your community. But I think it's also important to understand that we believe, Improving Birth believes, that when people have the tools to inspire change, that they'll take action. And I'm hoping that's you. I'm hoping that's you. I'm hoping that you want to come together and let's, Let's come together and learn from each other. Let's learn to maximize your impact in your community. So listen, if you're ready to take on that leadership role in your community, if you're ready to really help us make a change, we've got to move the needle, people. We've got to move it. It's going too slow. And the only way that we can do this is if we have roots in the ground at the community level, everywhere, not just talking heads on Facebook. We gotta actually be doing the work. And I know that, I know that it's not easy, believe me, God, do I know. It's not easy, it's not easy, especially when we have so much going on on our plate. but. It doesn't have to be something grandiose. It can be simple little things that you do in your community, a monthly meeting. It can be a baby fair once a year. Every community is different and what their needs are different. But I think it's about taking the step forward and being willing to take that role on as a leader in your community and help the women become amazing and to have the birth that they could have at least, you know, like birth is not easy. Birth is not smooth a lot of the times, even in the best of circumstances. 
but let's at least give them a chance. Right? Let's give them a chance to have a straightforward birth. Let's give them a chance, like not putting them behind the eight ball or the snowball, as we often call the snowball effect of all this stuff. But give them a chance. And we need to put pressure on the system because, like I said in, I don't know, one of my videos yesterday, the day before, that we know something. We know that it can be better. They don't have any idea. They they think that what's happening is perfectly fine. And it's not. It's not perfectly fine. And you and I, we know. And so we have to, we have to do our part in getting the information out there, getting the ideas out there, and getting the providers to make a difference because they can. They can. Anyways, so I'm rambling a little bit. If you feel like this is a step that you want to take and you want the support system that Improving Birth has put in place to help you, go over to our website. It's www.improvingbirth.org and click on the Join the Movement. And then it'll lead you to um, become a chapter leader. And you can get all the details about what we offer, the financial support, the fundraising support, the community that we create with other leaders across the country so that you don't feel alone. So you're not doing this alone. You've got a support system so that you can be the most successful that you can be. And we can really make an impact. The reality is these moms and babies, they need you. I need you. I need you to keep doing this work and to improve birth in our country. So thanks so much for listening and engaging. And I hope that you really will consider this very seriously. Have a great day.